Cases of ALS are unfortunately on the rise, and researchers say they could see an increase by 10 to 20 percent over the next decade. And the month of May is ALS Awareness Month, and our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with a closer look at the potential causes and an issue that's limiting important research. Doc. Well, Ty and Kimberly, ALS is a devastating fatal neurologic disease that causes a person to progressively lose the ability to move and speak. The director of the University of Michigan ALS Center of Excellence says cases are likely being undercounted because reporting isn't mandatory in every state. That has a negative impact on the research into causes and treatments. We see in our clinics clusters of ALS in certain geographic areas in our state of Michigan, but it's also reported throughout the country. And unless we understand where every case is, we do not understand if these clusters are meaningful biologically and meaningful to the community or not. Risk increases with age, but researchers at U of M have discovered that exposure to environmental toxins used in agriculture and manufacturing are also linked to ALS diagnosis and shorter survival. Our research shows that in the blood of our patients with ALS, they have a five-fold higher level of pesticides, legacy pesticides. They also have higher toxins in their blood they have also evidence of being in polluted air in the past. So there's a clear association between a polluted environment and developing ALS. Dr. Eva Feldman says cleaning up the environment is vital for reducing the risk of ALS. There are hundreds of uncleaned Superfund sites throughout the country. We need our government to target those sites and clean them up because it's in those sites that the toxins and pollutants are leak out and get into our water and into our soil and into our lakes. So cleanup is mandatory. Now, currently, a gene therapy is approved to treat familial ALS, which actually only accounts for a small percentage of overall cases. Researchers are also working to make ALS a more livable diagnosis through earlier intervention and access to clinical trials and hopefully a multidisciplinary ALS clinic. It's yeah. a horrible, horrible disease. Yeah. Obviously, awareness is crucial for early intervention, right, Doc? Yeah, absolutely. You know, in fact, it takes about a year for someone to actually be diagnosed with ALS because the initial symptoms can be pretty subtle. So here's the thing. If you have any muscle weakness, maybe twitching, slurred speech, or trouble with fine motor skills like buttoning a shirt, for example, then it's important to really get checked out by a neurologist or your primary care doctor sure. first. Yeah. Okay. Dr. McGeorge, thank you. Sure.